In order to receive some blessing from the word. Hebrews chapter number two. The first four verses are the verses that we are focused on. And as we begin, let me remind you that the Christians of this era were living in some very troubling times. Uh, they were dealing with some uh, various uh, types of trials that were causing them to slip away from Jesus. And when we think about the time in which they lived in, we have to remember for them, wearing the name of Christ wasn't a very popular thing to do. Right. Unlike today where people want to wear a cross and people want to put on bumper stickers and talk about Jesus, yeah. you could get in trouble for doing that in their day. Right. In their situation, they were finding that wearing the name of Christ could cause them the loss of their possessions. Uh -huh. Wearing the name of Christ could cost them jail time. Yeah. Wearing the name of Christ could even result in their death. Uh -huh. But their problems weren't just external problems. Right. Oh, yes, they had the problem with the authorities. Right. They had the problem with other people pointing them out, other citizens, and uh, accusing them of being Christians. Amen. They had all of that kind of trouble, but that wasn't the extent of their problems. Mm -hmm. They had internal problems as well. Oh, it's the internal problems were uh, the struggles that were as strong, if not stronger, then their external problems. Right. Their internal problems had to do with keeping a heart fixed on Jesus Amen. in the midst of their storm. Amen. The Hebrew writer was concerned for their internal situation as much as their external situation. Uh -huh. And in, with that in mind, he penned this letter to try to re-energize these Christians and get them to stop Flaking out on Jesus. In the section of the letter that this message is built upon, he's trying to drive them to see the utter foolishness of thinking that they could make it without Christ. And so I want to examine this section of scripture with you and pull in some other texts that are related to it and use as a subject drifting from Jesus. Drifting from Jesus. Notice the words, therefore, we must give more earnestness. We must give more heed to the things that we have heard, lest we drift away. Some of your translations might mean or say slip or let them slip. Uh -huh. But the idea is drifting away, yeah. right. drifting away from Jesus. As I thought about this lesson and prepared for it and studied different things, I, I thought about the situation we find ourselves in. We find ourselves in a situation where people aren't able to gather and have not been able to gather as normal for a long time. Uh -huh. We find ourselves in a situation where that has added to the lethargic spirit of some individuals when it comes to following Christ. Amen. We find ourselves in danger of losing the sensitivity that is required to be a committed child of God. And so that all fed in my thoughts as we look at this text this morning. Now I want you to see what the Hebrew writer does as he's concerned about these Christians drifting away from Jesus. He started by pointing to some things that they needed to understand and remember. He talked about neglecting the great salvation. But before he talked about the great salvation, he pointed to the greatness of the Savior. He pointed to the greatness of Jesus himself. I want to let you know today and I say it without fear of any contradiction that Jesus is the greatest person you'll ever learn about in this life. Jesus is the greatest that you'll ever find. The Bible in this text of scripture beginning actually at chapter number one points out several things about the greatness of Jesus. First of all, when you look in chapter one, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, watch it now, has in these last days spoken to us 
by his son. Amen. Why is Jesus so great? He is uh, one, the one that God's final word comes through. Yes, when you look at this text of scripture, Jesus is the father's final word. Amen. To humanity. Yes, what do we mean by the final word? You have to understand that God revealed himself in various ways. Yes, First of all, God spoke in natural revelation. Right, right. When you look at the way this world is put together, oh. how things operate the way that they do. Yeah. The sun rises, yeah. the sun sets. Yeah. The moon comes up, yeah. the moon sets. Yeah. The stars shine at night. And then they seemingly go to sleep. Yes, and then we have the changing of the seasons. Yeah. None of us have to wake up in the morning and ask oxygen to appear. Yeah. It's already there. Yeah. Nobody has to tell the tide when to go out and when to come in. Yeah. The fish don't have to ask us where can they live, yeah. nor do the birds of the air. Yeah. Everything that God made is very good. Yeah. And it teaches us that there has to be a God because you don't get a world so ordered out of chaos. People talk about a big bang. That's a big bunch of foolishness. This world has intelligence in it. And the fact that it is an intelligent design lets us know there's an intelligent creator. And therefore, God revealed himself in the natural revelation. Even people who never read the word of God can at least know that somebody had some sense enough to make the world that's been made. But that's not the full revelation of God. Oh, it reveals certain things about God, but it doesn't reveal everything about God. So God not only revealed himself and spoke through general revelation, natural revelation, but God has also revealed his word through the prophets. He called up men like Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Amos. He even called Jonah that we've been studying about. He called up Daniel. He called up Isaiah. He called up Hezekiah and Malachi and Zechariah and Haggai. He called all of these great prophets, major and minor. Not only did he do that, but David spoke a prophetic word. And then you see all the different prophecies in scripture. God spoke his word through his prophets. But when he spoke his word through his prophets, that wasn't the fullness of what he had to reveal. He said some things through natural revelation. He said some things through his prophets. But the Bible lets us know in these last days, and that's where we're living right now, he has spoken to us through his son. Jesus is the full revelation of God. Jesus reveals God's complete will. Jesus reveals all that's in the mind of God. When you hear Jesus, you don't need to wait to hear from anybody else. He is the full and final revelation of God. Brown, why are you emphasizing that? Because I'm sick and tired of people who are still going around thinking that there's more message from God, which you have from Jesus is all you're going to get and there ain't no second edition about it. There are no oh, by the ways. There are no, oh, I forgot. There's no more, oh, one more thing. What you have from Jesus is all we're going to get. Somebody says, well, didn't Jesus speak through the apostles? And you're right about that. But the apostles said nothing more and nothing less than the teaching of Jesus Christ. Somebody says, didn't the apostle Paul add his own stuff in 1 Corinthians chapter 7? Absolutely not. All Paul did was apply the teaching of Jesus to specific situations. No more revelation, just given an application of the revelation that Jesus had already given. Let me say that again. Just giving an application of the revelation that God had already given through Christ Jesus our Lord. He is the fullness of God's revelation. Don't look for nobody else. Somebody says, I saw a televangelist with a membership of 20, 30, 40, 50,000. He said he heard from God. She said she heard from God. Ain't heard nothing that's not already revealed in the book of God. And you and I need to stop pussyfooting around and being politically correct and not calling liars liars. When they're liars, they're liars. And that's all there is to it. 
Oh, Jesus. It's the full and final revelation of God. That's why he's so great. But that's not the only reason Jesus is so great. Bible lets us know in first, this first chapter uh, that not only is he that, but he is heir of all things. The Bible lets us know that Jesus is heir of all things. I want you to notice the Bible. I'm still digging in the book of Hebrews. The Bible says that he is heir of all things. Jesus is the heir of the Father. You know what the word heir means? It suggests the idea of inheritance. It brings about the idea of receiving something. It brings about the idea of someone getting what is rightfully his. Notice chapter 1, verse number 2. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. What do you mean that Jesus is heir of all things? It means that Jesus inherits not just the universe we live in right now, but all that is. Somebody says, I want some Bible for that. Let me give you a little bit more. When Jesus came out of the tomb on the third day, early one Sunday morning, he pulled his disciples to the side. He said to them, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why did Jesus say all power is given unto me? Because when he obeyed his Father and came back from the dead, his Father put him up and said, everybody need to listen to my heir. He is heir of all things. No wonder Psalm chapter number 2 if you will verses 8 and 9 the Bible says in that Psalm ask me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possessions you shall break them with a rod of iron you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel Jesus will will they come back again and when he comes back again when the sky peels apart, yeah. when Jesus shows up again, yeah. everybody in this world is going to recognize this is God's heir. Yeah. Oh, but not only is it great, because he's the fullness of God's revelation. Not only is it great, because he's the Father's heir, but he is great because he is the agent of creation. I'm still in chapter number one. I'm in verse number two. Listen to the Bible. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Watch this now. For whom also he made the worlds. You and I have to understand that there is no air without Jesus. There is no sky without Jesus. There is no water, no wind, no rain without Jesus. It is Jesus that used or God used as the agent of creation. In the beginning, the Bible talks about God created the heavens and the earth. But don't you know that that same text of scripture is referring to the father bringing into existence creation through the agency of the son. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got to understand Jesus didn't just show up All right. in a manger. Come on, now. Jesus didn't just show up as the son of Mary. Oh no, he was around a long time before that. In fact, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus always is. Now he came into the flesh and lived a human life, but he was around a long time before Mary had a baby. And the same Jesus is the one through whom this world was created. No sun, no moon, no water, no wind, no rain, no nothing, no us without Jesus. So the Bible lets us know he is great because of that. And then Paul tunes in in Colossians chapter number one, verses 16 through 18. He says, for by him 
all things were created that are in heaven and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether it be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created through him and for him. He's before all things. And the Bible says in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church. The Bible says he is the, from the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And that in all things, he ought to have first place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't give first place to Biden or Trump. Don't give first place to the leader of Islam. Yeah. Don't give first place to Buddha. Yeah. Don't give first place to the Vedas. Yeah. Don't give first place to Oprah. Yeah. Don't give first place to T.D. Jakes. Yeah. Don't give first place to Creflo Dollar. Yeah. Don't even give it to Joyce Meyer. No. Don't give first place to your mama or your daddy. Yeah. Don't give place to first to your professor or your teacher. Don't give first place to your banker or financial advisor. Yeah. Give first place to Jesus. Nobody would be around if it weren't for Jesus. Not only is he great for that, but he is great because he's the very radiance of God. I'm still right here in this first chapter. I'm going on a little bit further. Verse number three, who being the brightness of his glory. This is the idea of the Shekinah glory. The brightness and brilliance of God that the Old Testament saints saw on some occasions. These are the individuals that you read about, such in Exodus chapter 24, verse number 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. No wonder when Moses came before the burnt bush, God said, take off your shoes. Boy, you on holy ground. No wonder Moses' face shines so bright. He had to put a veil over it because he saw the presence of God and the brightness of that presence. And when you think about the glory of God the Father, as you read about in the Old Testament, Jesus said, I got the same shine. Oh, yes. But not only is that the case, he is great because he is the exact essence of God. What God the Father is, Jesus is. I remember reading about one of his disciples. I think his name was Philip. Jesus had been talking about the Father. Yeah. This man said, Jesus, just show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Yeah. Jesus said, look here, man. I've been hanging with you all this time. Don't you recognize me? Look at the power I got. Don't you recognize me? Don't you know I could stop the sun and make it stand still? Don't you recognize me? Don't you know that I could tell you to cast your net on the other side of the boat and you bring up fish that you can't bring in? Don't you recognize me? Don't you see that I can do anything I want to do? I can do it anytime I want to because I and the Father are one. Oh, yes, he's great because he's the very essence of God. But not only that, let me pull one more out of chapter 1 and verse number 2 and 3 as we continue to read. Bible says about Jesus, not only all the things I've said so far, but who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by himself. The Bible goes on to say, as we read a little bit further, upholding all things by the word of his power when he had himself purged our sins. Jesus is great. Not only for the reasons I've said, but Jesus is great because he's the only one who can purge our sins. Oh, that's why he's so great. Do you not know that there could not have been another person on this earth that could have gone to the cross on your behalf or mine? Do you not know that there was no man, no woman who could die for us? Somebody says David was pretty good, but it wasn't good enough to die for us. He was on the roof one night. He saw a coke bottle shape. Yeah. Pretty hair, yeah. pretty face. He decided, got to have her for me. Yeah. He killed her husband and got with her and gave her a baby. How can that man die for your sins? He messed up himself. 
Somebody says, Abraham could have died for me. I don't think so. Here's a man who had a problem when it came to courage about his beautiful wife. When the brother started checking her out and he started thinking they would kill him and take her, he said, baby, do you love me? Tell him that we are relatives and they'll leave me alone. In fact, they'll treat me quite nicely. How in the world can a liar die for you and die for me? Somebody says, well, there's got to be somebody under the old covenant who could die for me. I want to let you know nobody could have taken the weight that Jesus took. Nobody had pure blood. Nobody had a pure life. Nobody was 100% obedient. Only Jesus could do that and that's why he purged our sins in his own blood. Oh, he is so great. He is now seated at the right hand of God. That doesn't mean that Jesus is sitting down in a physical chair. It has the idea that he has been elevated. He's got authority. He's got status. He got clout. He got game. You got to recognize who Jesus is. Paul said it in Philippians chapter number two. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who though being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a man. Yeah. Having been found in the likeness of man, yeah. Bible says he humbled himself in the death, even the death of the cross. Yeah. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus is higher than you can ever get. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And that's what it means that he's sitting on the right hand of God. Oh, Jesus is so great. Nobody greater than Jesus. I could talk about him all day long. Nobody greater than Jesus. Nobody could do for me what Jesus has done. Nobody can do for you what Jesus has done. Ain't no mountain higher than Jesus. No elevation higher than Jesus. It doesn't matter where you go. You can search the earth from pillar to pillar, from post to post. Nobody is better than Jesus. He is great. And therefore, in chapter number two, this Hebrew writer comes back and he starts talking about the greatness of salvation. I want you to see something about this mighty text of scripture. The Bible has told us that Jesus is great in chapter number one of Hebrews. But it doesn't stop there. You read the rest of the book of Hebrews and he keeps coming back to say Jesus is great. The author started out by talking about the greatness of Jesus and he got so excited he had to break off of that and just start talking about another aspect because he talked about how high and mighty Jesus is. Now I want you to notice that in this first chapter and coming into the second chapter he talks about angels yes, yeah. and he talks about Jesus yes, and when he talks about angels and Jesus he's making a comparison right. between the salvation that Jesus brings yeah and the covenant that God brought. Right. I want you to see that as we travel together. He wants us to understand in chapter number two, therefore we must give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Watch this now, for if the word spoken through angels, pause for a minute, what are you doing Hebrew writer? I'm trying to make a point that the angels are the means by which God brought in the old covenant. Yes, right. That's it. Well, Brown, I thought that was Moses. No. You got to understand that the angels dealt with Moses. Well, well. The angels are the means by which God brought the old covenant in place. Yeah, uh -huh. And there's something else taking place in this second chapter. The Bible lets us know once again in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 4, having become much better than the angels. Right. Right, Talking about Jesus. Amen. He has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name yes. than they. Yes, oh, you got to get what's happening here. Well, well. The Hebrew writer is about to introduce us to something. Yes, he already said in chapter number one uh -huh. 
Jesus is greatest. And then he dropped in the fact that Jesus has become much better, so much better than the angels. Let me break it down this way. You see, you got to understand that mankind was made just a little lower than the angels. Go ahead and read the Old Testament book of Psalms. Why does man that you are mindful of him? He was made just a little lower than the angels. Don't you know that you and I are made just a little lower than the angels? Oh, we don't have wings on our back. We don't have wings on our feet. We don't have wings that we can just fly around and take care of this business. Don't you know that God used angels many times under the old covenant? And don't you know that God still uses angels today? All right. I need some scripture, Brown. All right, let me pop this one on you. You remember when the Bible talks about some of us have entertained angels. Unaware. I've shared with you before, you didn't get up this morning on your own. You didn't sleep safely because you had Vivid or ADT. You didn't sleep well and safe because your neighborhood is all that. All you got to do is move a few extra other folk in there. And your safe neighborhood will become an unsafe neighborhood. Almost said the ghetto. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You are safe at night because God has his angels watching over you. Some of us don't believe that. We're so scientific. Yes. We're so used to what's in a chemistry book, yeah. what's in a physics book. Yeah. We don't pay attention to the realm above our realm, but the Bible always talks about the realm that we can't see, but it impacts what we do see. Yeah. All right. All right. And so God has angels yes, watching over us. Yes, oh, Jesus, though, was made a little lower than the angels. Yes, Are you getting this? Yes, you see, Jesus was there at the beginning. Yes, yes, Once again, in the beginning was the Word. Right. And the Word was with God. Right. And the Word was, was God. Yes. Jesus was there at the beginning. Yes, but what happened? He put on human flesh. Yes, he became like us. Yes, so when he became like us, if we're made a little lower than the angels, then Jesus came a little lower than the angels. Well, why did he come a little lower than the angels? He became a little lower than the angels so that as a man, he could be obedient to his father. And when he was 100% obedient to his father, even to the point of death on the cross, his father lifted him up far above the angels. In other words, he earned it. Yeah. He earned it. When he became a little lower than the angels, they were helping him. Yes, sir. All right. Your work. That's yeah. right. That's right. Read your Bible. Yes, when Jesus is in the garden, not wanting to die, yes, he is praying. Yes. And the Bible says an angel oh, ministered unto, ministered unto yes, him. Right. Yes, but now they serve him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now right. he is on the throne. Yeah. Now he dispatches them yes. and tells them what to do. Because he started telling them what to do. He became lower than them for a little while. But he raised up and was exalted over them. And now he tells them what to do for his people. Oh, you ought to say hallelujah for that. Yes, gee, we sing that song. Angels watching over me. Why do you think they are? Somebody told them to. I'm in Revelation now. This ain't in my notes, but I'm going to give it to you for free. I'm in Revelation now. Well, Jesus has the angels being told something. John right to the angel of the church in Laodicea. Yes, Ephesus, yes, Philadelphia, yes, Sardis, and uh, Smyrna. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes, God 
Jesus Christ himself tells the angels what to do because he's the resurrected Lord. So Jesus is superior to the angels. God used angels to set up the old covenant. Let me give you some Bible for that. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 19. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgression to the seed should come by to whom the promise was made and it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Moses was the one that God used as a mediator between himself and the people of Israel. But the angels worked with Moses. God gave the law by means of Moses and by means of the angels. The angels worked with Moses to give the old covenant. But I want to let you know something. God used Jesus to set up the new covenant. You see, we're dealing with this greatness stuff now. This is a great salvation. How is the salvation so great? Well, the old way of getting with God was by angels in the old covenant using Moses. But the new way of getting with God is through Jesus himself. Who would you rather go through? Somebody that's a neighbor of God or the very son of God? Somebody outside the house or somebody inside the house? I would much rather have Jesus make my introduction to the Father than an angel who is further distant from the Father. Oh yes, Jesus is the one who brought the new covenant. Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 8 verse number 7 if that first covenant had been faultless then there would be no place sought for a second because finding fault with them he said behold the days are coming says the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they did not continue in my covenant I discarded them says the Lord for this is the covenant that I will make and from that point let me try to add live a little bit Use my own words. God said I gave them law on written tablet of stone, but I found they had a stony heart. But I had to make a new covenant. This time it's not going to be external. I'm going to write my law in their minds and in their hearts. Why? Because folk don't like to obey law on the outside of them. But when I make a law on the inside of them, they'll do right because it's internal. Yeah. It's intrinsic. <laughs> Drive around Las Vegas. Come on. You'll see some neighborhoods that are coming up. Yeah, yeah. And man, they are some expensive neighborhoods. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Drive around Madison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll find them starting in the half a million dollar range. On, I'm living out there close to Cliff Cove. Notice I said close to it, Cliff Farm. I didn't say in it. I said close to it. And they got so much good stuff going in that place. Sometime I wish I was up in there. And they even got it so nice. They charging you an extra 3% and go to the taco mama. That's over there. If you haven't heard, you better learn something. They got all that nice stuff over there. And the house is starting somewhere close to licking half a million dollars. Beautiful neighborhood. I've been to some other neighborhoods getting up there over a million dollars. Lovely neighborhoods, great mansions out there. Beautiful places. But I'll tell you one thing. You let there be a law passed in Hunts, Vegas or in Madison that says it doesn't matter what your income is. You can move in here. Well, well, well. Let there be a law. Yes, sir. You can make it all the law you want. But the folk who don't like it will find a way around it and keep you from up out of there. Because you can't make a law to legislate the heart. It has to be from the inside on the out. We have a problem with police brutality again. I thought we were finished with that. I thought that was over back in the 70s. Well, well. You remember Marvin Gaye was singing that song, What's yeah. Going On in the Late 60s? No picket lines, yeah. picket signs. Yeah. Don't punish me yeah. with brutality. Yeah. Talk to me so you can see yeah. what's going on. Go ahead, Brown. <laughs> and here we still got mess. Yes, sir. Taser, taser, taser. Boom. Yeah. Dead young man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. We got all kinds of mess. Yeah. And we wonder why the hatred yeah. 
Yeah. Don't we have laws against hatred and racism and bigotry? We got laws on the books. But we need a law in the heart. When the law is in the heart, I don't have to worry about you shooting me. When the law is in the heart, I don't have to worry about you moving away because I moved in. When the law is in the heart, then we can deal with one another in the right way. God said my, my, my law of the old covenant mediated and given through angels it was a perfect law but the folk had bad hearts yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. so I have to do a new way yeah, and I'm going to use my son to bring in a new way and he is going to institute the new covenant and this new covenant is going to work from the inside out Amen. yes this great salvation is great because it covers every race. Yes, it covers both genders. Yes, I better say that again. On, it covers both genders. Yes, oh, you missed it one more time. Yeah. It covers both genders. Yes, Male and female. Yes, I'm not trying to be politically correct and add all that other ABC soup stuff. Yes, Male and female. And female. That's it. Yeah. Brown, I don't like it. I'm going to report you. Male and female. That's it. I'm not running for any office. I'm not worried about your support to be the mayor. I'm just preaching Jesus. In the beginning, God made them male and female. And said, for this reason, man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Not to his best male friend. To his wife. Not to the man that was made a woman. To his wife. You don't have to say amen. I know it's true. The salvation is there for every race. No black, yellow, red, white, and brown. The so the great salvation is for both genders and the great salvation is even for all creation. Don't you know the very nature itself is waiting for Jesus to come back again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. The creation groans yes, sir. Yes, sir. waiting for Jesus to come back again. Yeah, yeah. We're not supposed to be having tornadoes. No, sir. We're not supposed to be having hurricanes and earthquakes. Things of this nature are that way because sin has messed up nature. Yes, tell it, tell it. And so the salvation is great because of those things. The salvation is greater yes. that Jesus brings because it has greater promises. Yes. The salvation is greater because it has eternal rewards. The salvation is greater because it brings a superior relationship between God and man. And the salvation is greater because it has an everlasting high priest who is always there to plead to the father for brown messing up all the time all right, all right, all right. oh yes it's a great salvation yes, mm -hmm. now just given these facts mm -hmm. no one can expect to escape no, sir. Yes, sir. if they neglect this great salvation yes, yes. notice what the Hebrew writer does mm -hmm. he said if under the old covenant that the angels brought in if you violated that covenant and you were punished, yeah. how much greater? Yes, it is. Well, yeah. How much greater yeah. will you be punished if you neglect mm. That's good, Doc. what Jesus brought? Yes, Jesus told a parable one time. Mm. The parable was this farmer sent out his servants yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to the folks who were supposed to respond to him. That's right. And they killed the servant. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Servant never served. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the owner said, okay, I'm going to send my son this time. Yes, sir. Yeah. And for sure they're going to listen to him. Uh -huh. And they killed him too. Yeah, that's, right. that's, all right. that's good. Don't you know <laughs> that if we neglect what Jesus has brought, there's nothing else for us. Yeah, that word neglect has the idea of having no care for or to be unconcerned. And there are too many people in the church that are unconcerned about their eternity. Yeah, man. Man. I am really tired mm. of this effort of Christian groups today uh -huh. that are all about trying to cater to the people. Come on, Michael. So the people will come. 
yes, sir. and be a part of that church. Uh -huh. Look, man, all I got is this book yes, and the message of it. Yeah. If you want something else, don't come here. Yeah. It's all I got. Yes, sir. I get sick and tired of this idea of being politically correct. I got to say the right thing, yes. have the right thing, have the right entertainment, have the right show, have the right movie, have the right this, that, and the other. No, man, I'm too old for that. All I got is the book. Yeah. Just got the book. That's it. That's it. I don't have time for the rest of it. Yeah. My yeah. runway is short. Yes, sir, I don't have time to try to put on a show to make you happy. On, I don't have enough time to try to have some sort of gizmo for this, that, and the other and build up the church that way. I had an old brother that used to be with me at the church in Lewisburg, Tennessee for the church that I ministered to for 14 years. And he and I used to talk sometimes and he always had a good point. He said, if you hot dog them in, somebody else going to hamburger them out. <laughs> He was right about that. Wes, he was not about trying to come up with a, no, we want to make you come. Oh, let's do, what do you want us to do? How do you want us to dress? How do you want us to worship to attract you? Man, this is not sweeps week. This is the message of Christ. The only savior. Yeah, I don't have time to put on the externals to make you feel good. Amen. Amen. It's just the book. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And only the book. Oh, I'll never be voted one of these fancy, attractively uh, polished preachers who draws in everybody because he, he, he gives a little bit to everybody, everybody what they want. Yeah. I, I don't have time for this. Oh, <laughs> What do you serve? The word? Yes, sir. I want some soup. You got the word. Yes, sir. I want steak. You got the word. Got the word. Come on now. I want dessert. Come on. We, we, we got the word. That's all we got. We don't serve anything else. That's it. Yes, sir. Just the book. Yes, sir. And then, lastly, good. let me end with the tragedy of drifting. Come on now, brother. The Bible says we must give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, All right. lest we drift away. Well, well. Let me give you this and I'll have my seat. We are warned against the danger of drifting. Mm -hmm. These terms suggest a nautical metaphor. Mm -hmm. The hearers must attend to their course with diligence lest through neglect they drift away and miss the intended harbor. All right, all right. Come on. Well, it's possible to become so lax uh -huh. in navigating our spiritual lives on, mm -hmm. that we get further and further away from Christ, yeah. even though we think we're drawing near him. Uh -huh. mm. It's like being on an sheet of ice in the ocean uh -huh. and traveling on this huge sheet of ice in the north direction but not recognizing that the current is taking the sheet of ice in the south. All right, all right. Well, well. You're getting further and further away Come on, yes, sir. Come on, brother. from Jesus. Yes, it's possible to become so casual about our faith, our commitment to Christ, mm -hmm. that we just simply drift away. Mm -hmm. mm. Couples Drift away. Well, Friends. Drift away. Drift away. Mm -hmm. How does it happen? Simple. Don't do anything. Uh-huh. Mm, say that. Don't do anything. Say that. Married folks. Mm -hmm. Don't do anything. All right. Come on now. To keep the buoyancy going. Yes, All right, bro. Brothers, don't offer any compliments. Uh-huh. Mm. Don't. Buy any jewelry. Come on, brother. Come on. Don't send any flowers. Come on, brother. Yeah, yeah. Don't even smile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't touch. Yeah. Don't hug. Uh -huh. Don't do anything. Come on, Mike. All right. And I promise you to drift away. You know, that's right. That's right. Yes, sir. It'll drift away. Right. Yes, sir. Sisters, don't pay any attention. Come on. Mm -hmm. Don't give any encouragement. Mm -hmm. well, well. Just do nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you. The longer we do nothing, somebody going to be out there. Yeah, well, well, well. Who want to offer something? Yes, sir. Right now. Yes, sir. And it'll slip away. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm.
because it's slippery when it's wet. Yes, sir. That's right. Yeah! When we think about this text, like these early Christians, we can drift away. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Wes, you, we can drift away. Yes, sir. Drifting away doesn't happen just like that. No, no. All right. It happens a little bit at a time. One of the things I've worried about during this pandemic is the faith of some of our members. Yeah. Right. Say that, Say that. Becoming lethargic. Come on, yes, sir. And this is not the only congregation. God's people everywhere. Uh -huh. You see, the more you don't come together, yes, sir. Come on, the easier it is not to come together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Out of sight. Yes, sir. Out of mind. Yes, sir. Out of mind. Yes, sir. These Hebrew Christians were that way. Uh -huh. Right. They gradually turned away from Jesus to so-called alternatives. Yes, sir. You know that whole lot of Christians who are starting to peek over the window at other religions? Come on, Michael. Come yeah, on, Michael. Yeah, 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 yeah. That might be pretty good. Yeah. Right now. And they start thinking a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of that. Uh -huh. Man, you can't make a delicious chocolate cake hey. by saying a little bit of flour and butter and sugar and two scoops of mud. <laughs> well, well, well. You got a mess. Brother Andy doesn't make these delicious pound cakes no. by going into the garbage and throwing in the stuff in the garbage. You can't mix it up. You mix it up, you mess it up. Come on, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, brother. Right, brother. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you married folk would be happy if your spouse brought another man or another woman? Brother. Into the bedroom and say, more is better. No. No. And you know good and well we'd be coming down to visit you. Come on, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you would have done something you had no business doing. That's right. That's right. You mix it up, you mess it up. Yeah. And then when we look at this thing, we find these Hebrew Christians were drifting away because they were skipping out on worship and study. Yeah. Mm. Hebrews chapter number 10 is not by isolation. No, yeah. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Right. Why? They were drifting away. Yes, we become lazy about our outright refusal we can also be of learning anything new. Uh -huh. This is drifting away. Yes, sir. And as I close, you know, drifting suggests a current. Yes, sir. Drifting suggests that there is a current somewhere that is just pulling you someplace else. A current is going on always in our world. All right. And if you just stay and not focus and stay paying attention to Jesus and your commitment to Jesus, this world will sweep you away. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. You'll be swept away into thinking that two women living together as husband and wife is right. Come on, wife. Come on, wife. Come on. Because you'll see it all the time on TV. Yeah, yeah. And it won't be in, it, it won't catch your senses anymore. Come on. And you just drift away. Yes, sir. You drift away into thinking that giving to the Lord is no big deal. Uh huh. Mm. You just get caught up in other stuff. Yes, sir. All right, all right. And drift away. Amen. We can drift away whenever we stop paying attention. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some people are drifting into diabetes. Come on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because they're not watching their health. Uh huh. Right. Some folk are drifting into other poor elements of health because they're not paying attention. Yes, sir. Don't let your soul drift away from on, Jesus. Man. Man. Don't let your soul drift away from the Lord. Amen. And so, drifting from Jesus. Mm -hmm. Church, we need, as Brother Gordon said a little earlier, we need to tighten up. Yes, sir. Amen. We need to tighten up our faith. Right. Yes, sir. We need to put aside the things that are causing us to lose focus on Jesus. Right. Single folk, I gotta have this man, I gotta have this woman. You can get drifting away. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Got to earn this money. Got to earn this money. You can be drifting away. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable just doing nothing. You'll be drifting away. Yes, mm -hmm. We need to take more earnest heed. Mm -hmm. Lest we drift away. Yes, sir. Close with this. My hope is built on nothing less yes, than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean. Jesus. On Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock, we must stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Amen. Amen. Amen.
How many can testify this morning that the Lord is worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor? Gave his life on Calvary for a sinner like you and me. So we ought to just.